We talked a little bit about your beliefs, or not your beliefs, some of the biggest issues you think you're facing as a woman when it comes to like um, dating. To me, I think some of the biggest issues I face as a man is the unrealistic expectations when, that women have when you get into relationships with them. And I think that's also tied into, it's unrealistic in the sense of they expect to get a lot for not doing a lot of work. So there's like, they expect a large amount of effort from men but they themselves put no effort in and they're saying like they're waiting for a man to like put in the effort. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that is? Hmm, I don't really, I don't really know if I ever experienced or saw a relationship like this because you are also an exception when it comes to men, you know, in mm. the way that you want to provide for a woman that you're really focused on getting married because a lot of men don't want to get married. <laughs> I guess so, it might also be something in Europe maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if it's really just a European thing or if it's just a new generation thing that marriage is not the main goal anymore. But I think, um, yes, I mean, a lot of women do have high expectations. That's true. But I, I think that's not only a woman thing. This is also a man thing. They do have high expectations as well. I think the the only way to to yeah balance that or create a balance is to to search for someone who is willing to give the same uh, amount of of effort that you are willing to give and i think as soon as you found that and it is hard to find actually <laughs> it is very hard to find mm. i mean i've been searching for that as well but i think yeah and you'll have to find someone who is looking into the same direction like um, same vision for life same vision for life yeah. you're taking over my point though but why? Um, i don't know why because i'm not really like those women so i cannot really say how they hmm. you know think or why they think so you like think that. you're in some of your friends like when they're dating like they have pretty realistic expectations from men or they don't say anything that you think is like kind of outlandish i have to think about some of my friends but i think um Mm, no, some things are not unrealistic. It depends on what you're expecting, you know, or what you're talking about. Like, for example, what do you mean? Like getting a um, lot of I think the a, a biggest thing is... Or no, no, no. No, I don't care what a woman likes. Um, I think to me, one of the big things that I've seen is really the lack of effort. That's like the... That's probably the number one. That's like mm -hmm. probably the number one signal. What is effort? Effort to me is that... As a man, like, there's a natural... I think people think men just pursue. There's a natural push and pull that comes to relationships. Like, mm -hmm. as I pursue, you give a little bit, and then you pull away, but you give a little bit. But people just pull, pull, pull mm -hmm. away. I think they expect men to constantly initiate, have conversations, try to understand you. But then women take no time to actually understand the man. So it's really just, like, this one-sided relationship where... Let's say I'm like, hey, how's your day going? You're like, oh, it's really good. And you're like, didn't even care to ask... Mm -hmm. what I want to do or I'm like hey what do you enjoy to do what do you enjoy to eat or things like that and it's like what da, 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 da. but it's like okay didn't care at all <laughs> it's like what I had to do or anything like that and then or it's like um let's say you do something nice like you know maybe you decide to like buy a like a small gift get some roses or get some food or like you know do something mm -hmm. nice because you really want to show this person you care you almost have to say like and so then you almost have to fight in relationships to get the things you want instead of like your partner naturally doing things to like care for you. That's actually crazy because all of my friends and all the women I know, they are more submissive and they are more like they enjoy to give a lot to them. And, and, it, and it comes to a point that where I even say or realize that they are doing too much for this one person mm. because most of them, most of those men who get that are not really supposed to get it. <laughs> so you think they the are not men, the ones who give the men something back. Who are, so I don't know. But I, they are different to you, you know, so I cannot compare it. So I don't know. I think I've been an asshole in my life, but I've also been like very sweet and a gentleman in my life. I think the times that I've been in, I mean, there is, I, if I look back at my life, there's probably times where there was somebody that I, who was doing a lot for me and that I didn't do as much for them. But I, I actually have it kind of built into who I am as a person that if someone's doing a lot for me, I just have to do 
things for them. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I it feels uncomfortable almost when someone's doing too much <laughs> for me. Like I'm like, okay, you like I need to like up my own level. Um, but I think it's very common more so. It's like people stay at a low level and then I'm like, oh, well, I'll hang out here with you. But then it's like, well, you don't want to do anything. Like, like you don't care. It's like, I just, I, like I'm constantly like, you know, trying to get to know and connect to the person. But I do hear what you're saying as far as like there are some men out there who are not, who are getting all that and they don't deserve it. Right. But as I think what you mean is also, maybe it's also, because some women hesitate to do something for for a man who they just begin to date because they had bad, bad experience with men mm. that it maybe did a lot for and then you know so you think that might be, I don't want to use the term baggage <laughs> <laughs> but if there is you think women who have been hurt and harmed in the past don't you think it's kind of their responsibility to also heal that harm yes but if you it depends on how often that happens i mean i can speak from my own experience that i'm really like i get more i got more hesitant like i i'm hesitating to to really put myself too much into something that is just in the beginning because i'm afraid that i will regret it afterwards you know if it's if it's turning out to be bad or ending bad again and i mean of course i've had a lot of bad experiences <laughs> I mean, I could write a book about it. Oh, no, we could do I a think... whole podcast about it. Come on. I could. <laughs> tell tell all. Okay, wait. Let's take this. We'll put a pin in this because I want to come back to this okay. uh, about like healing. And well, I'll say healing and talking about going into new relationships. But what is the worst experience that you think you had? I've dated someone who uh, wanted to have a relationship with me. I wasn't even searching for a relationship yet. And I told him that, but he was really focused on having a relationship with me and he really forced it some kind. And not okay. forced it, I don't want to he say forced, forced him a relationship. No, <laughs> I, he, he forced me. Like he really talked me into this somehow. So and I like, was like kind of, you know. So he put a lot of effort into hyping you up. <laughs> I didn't really put a lot of effort in it, but I think, um, uh, not in this one, but I think he. Um, so you want to have a story about yeah, put well, a lot of effort and so okay, no, 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 no. I want to talk about this story. I want to talk about this the story. Is he talked me to a relationship? I agreed to this relationship. We had a relationship. He wanted to have a strictly monogamous relationship with me, and after a few months, I found out that he had at least five other girlfriends. Damn. At least of those who I knew. Yeah, so he had <laughs> himself five other little bitties. Yeah, so. And it, was, it wasn't even the, the best part of the story. He also tried to impregnate every one of them. He tried <laughs> so, to impregnate all, yeah. all. Wait, so even wait, so wait, already, wait, come, wait, come back. So this dude, he's like, he's like, hey, yo, Cookie, you know, man, <laughs> I, I just want you. I want you to want me. I want this to work. You know what I'm no, saying? No, it actually started very casual. But at some point, he started to act as if he is hurt if we don't make it like official or yeah, as if he had a ca- caught feelings and you know, he wanted to make it official and he don't want to share me like, uh, well, he don't want to share me with any other men or whatever. So I agreed to a relationship because I thought he was a good guy. He was talking very nicely. Mm-hmm. And usually I think I have a radar for <laughs> lies. Okay. <laughs> But it's not always the case. Some are really good liars, so. So he was a really good liar. Turns out he didn't have to. You how know, how did you find out? You, how did you find out he had other? You can tell from a facial expression sometimes that someone is lying. For example, avoiding eye contact, or you know, like getting nervous. Getting it depends. There are some things that, like, to me, when I think of something, I have to like, I kind of like look up to the left when I'm like recalling a memory. Yes, but. I can tell how it is. It's yeah, just I mean, like thing, you can tell. Know, like, I mean, there are certain things like avoiding eye contact to me is like you're doing this and you're like darting away when you're like refusing to maintain like intimate eye contact. I think something. you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but so, how did you find out like the other girls about the other? Uh, one of the girl wrote, uh, girls wrote me. So she like just stalked. It stalked she, him. Or? She asked me if I'm one of his girlfriends <laughs> because they found out before about the other ones, and so it was already a group of four or five four girlfriends yes four girlfriends and he also had one at home so he was living with a woman as well i never actually visited his home because he was telling he me always something came about to you. roommates and stuff yeah so he came to you okay 
Oh, so so then is that like a little key out there for a, ladies? Is ladies should go to the dude's house at least once? Well, I mean, a long distance relationship is really hard to you know to really look make it work. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I don't know. I think the this, worst thing is that I even knew his address and I didn't look like. Because that gave me trust, you know, that he really gave me his real ad- address. Mm. I thought, okay, he wouldn't give me the, his address if there's something going on. So I didn't take it. <laughs> no. High risk, Please high don't reward. take that as an advice. <laughs> high <you>? risk, <laughs> high reward, gentlemen. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but no, so obviously homeboy. So then you said he wanted to impregnate you. How did that happen? Uh, no, no, not me. I was, I, he asked me, I think he asked me once, but I told him, no, I will not do that because I don't know him that well and we don't have a committed, like a real good relationship, a it's stable relationship yet. I mean, we were just dating for two months or something, like, and I was really thinking that's a crazy question, actually, <laughs> to ask me after two months. Mm. So, but I found out that one of the other girls, she was already, like, planning a baby with him. Mm. They were dating for like a half a year. And she even lived in the same city. I mean, that's like when uh, I will say this for the women out there. That is like a primary desire for men, men, uh, high value men or I don't even say high value men. Men in general want to generally procreate. So that's something they obviously look for in partners. But like I said, when you come down to morality, that usually happens in the sanctity of marriage, which is based on like certain religions and things like that. But when you get out of that, I think this is where you start to see society trend towards and. Sadly, I think we're going to see more of that in society than less of it as long as we're in like an amoral society. But <laughs> but I think but I think having the will to impregnate like several women at the same time is kind of a that. fetish, isn't that a kind of a fetish? Men have been doing that since throughout history and no, men still do that. Men still but, like, you, you, but you nowadays hear, you, you hear but about, you are human, you have a brain. You know that you have to provide for these kids as well, you know? Men, you see dudes, and so I grew up in the ghetto. So to me, like you see dudes with five different baby mamas. It's like <laughs> what it, people still do that. I mean, some of the riches, Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon. I know, <laughs> but he has money to provide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, but like that's what I'm saying to you is like dudes want. This is like this is where I think if women took time to understand men, you probably have better relationships with men versus like oh, constantly. But I think I do. I do understand these these instincts, like uh, you know. Spreading your DNA. I mean, I have a lot of understanding for that, actually. I mean, I even know that's, that it is very hard for men to have monogamous relationships, right? Yeah, it's hard. I think I think monogamy and marriage... Here's what I say. I think it's built for... I think it's for society. I think it's built to create a stable society. Okay. You thought I was going to say it's for women. <laughs> no. <laughs> um what you thought I was going to say? I thought you have another opinion about that, actually, because you, I think you are really m- very much about monogamy, right? I uh, So let me, so for those who want to know how I feel, <laughs> what I feel about monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm a man, right? Hmm. I like sex. Probably just as much, if not a little bit more than the average man. I was blessed with a high libido. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding uh not really. congratulations but, <laughs> okay <laughs> but no so let's have like a very real conversation with it i think as a man here's my belief um monogamy i will never prescribe to polyamory in the sense of like i've thought about it i've thought about the idea of it like in my mind i think every man wants it it's the idea to have that variety and constant different women to be able to have sex with but like Here's the truth. At the end of the day, like, I think, like, it's not going to last. And when you ask yourself in 20 to 30 years what is actually genuinely going to make you happy and fulfilled, it's probably having enriching relationships and safe, secure attachments with people in your life, which is generally only going to occur in monogamy. Now, Mm -hmm. I think that when you open the door to polyamory, that opens and invites a lot of different chaos, a lot of different factors. And throughout history, we've seen it. It just doesn't really work. But I think that monogamy is the most equal and fair way to have a relationship because I think it, it is the embodiment. Let's say let's just remove it away from religion, but it's, it's, equal, it's equality in the sense of like you're giving up your ability to go sleep with other people and I'm giving up my ability to sleep with other people. And I get that there's a lot of men that are like, well, I make a lot more money, so I should be able to go fuck who I want. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> I get it, dude. I, I, I 100% get it. That's uh, interesting because that's, I just read an article about who was it? 
who said the same thing but was a woman. Like, who cheated on who? I don't remember. It was a famous, famous woman. But I don't remember. No, but I mean, she it happens. Said the same yeah, thing. yeah. She earned a lot of money at that time and she was cheating. That's 100% cheating. what happens. Most, most of the time when you see women make more money, they end up cheating or getting divorced. Like, it happens all the time. But I think, like, that's, like, a power dynamic that occurs. But the reality is this. When you look at relationships and you break it really down, it's like, let's say you do make more money. That just means to me like there's another thing that your wife could be doing. Like if I'm making more money, then yeah, you probably do need to be supporting me in certain kind of ways. If I'm like supporting your lifestyle, then yeah, I'm not saying I'm gonna go clean the kitchen, but definitely better be doing something to support my life. I don't disagree with that because I think if like I've seen these videos of women complaining about their men doing nothing in the household even though they are housewives. And I think it's this is something really That's weird to me because you got it. You know, yeah, you, you, that, that, it's like you're like why are you complaining about your life like clean it only takes like maybe like let's say it takes four hours to clean you still have four hours in your exactly. day to go do whatever you want exactly so like to me i guess this is where this is where i think and this kind of gets back to full circle is like here's the thing i think men do provide but then women don't want to do anything so men are like well fuck it fine i'll just go fuck whoever i want if like if you're not going to do what your job in the relationship i'm not going to do my job in the relationship which is if you want me to stay loyal to you Okay, but to be fair, I think it's not always the case when men cheating. The, uh, when men are cheating, I'm not that saying. I'm not saying it not, always. You know, some men are just. I'm yeah. So I do think there are. <laughs> I think yeah. I think some men have. Here's the thing: most men, if you, most men are only as faithful as their options, and I will say that in the sense of like most men are not used to having pussy thrown at them. Let's just be real. Like eighty part eighty percent of men aren't getting laid a lot. There are like the what we call the high value men who do mm -hmm. have a lot of access to women but this is where i would say also i guess to them as high value men is like high value men still have to have discipline and i think that if you want to have a successful relationship for the long term that's where the discipline comes in now mm -hmm. this is also where i would say is like you know for your woman and your partner and things like that it's like this is where you can also weigh in and when you pick your partner it's like hey this is the deal like if i'm gonna provide and do all this stuff for you it's like you need to like pick up you can't just sit there and